Hey everybody, Nick here, and today we're going to go on ahead and do a, a scale installation on this little guy. This is a Spydeco Para 3. Um, many of you may have seen, if you looked at my uh, year collection video, as well as some other things, an installation video showing you how to install a, a set of scales from RG Custom Machine Works um, and, uh, on the Para 2, and I really like that, even though I find the Para 2 to be a little bit too big for my uh, daily life. Well, RG has sent along a new set of scales that fit a slightly more reasonable knife along with a clip, as well as just a little bit of... <laughs> like, luckily he's correct, otherwise that's very presumptuous. But anyways, um, so my goal for today is to inst... Whoa! The scale is... the contour is very different than the stock. Oh, this ought to be interesting. I'm very curious how that's going to work out. All right, so the scale is very different than the stock, but uh, should save some weight that way. Let's go ahead and take this guy apart. For what it's worth, right now, this pair of three is very slightly favoring show side and has an action that is actually quite nice. A little tiny bit of blade play. So that's where we're starting. Let's go on ahead and take this guy apart. Um, this is Factory Fresh. I actually bought this specifically knowing that RG was going to be doing a set of, uh, of custom scales for this guy. Oh boy. Are we threadlocked? Oh, we threadlocked. Let me grab my uh, slightly higher torque wrench here and see whether we can do that. Otherwise, might have to bust out the soldering iron. And that's not going to be amazing, but it'll work. We're going to T10 in the pivot here. So let's go on ahead and see if I can... Okay. Yeah, there was just some thread locker there. Um, but we are thread unlocked now. So that's good. Probably going to have to do the same thing on the other side here. Yep, there we go. Thread unlocked. Not the end of the world, but it is a thing that you might face. Good lord, look at the amount of thread locker on there. That's not nothing. Might be a thing that you end up facing if you do this later on down the road. And then this is should be a T8. That is not uh, particularly threadlocked hard, so go ahead and take that off. And then I'll need a T6 for the Bex. Ah, damn. So this other side screw is, uh, it is a free spinning uh, standoff there, which is not necessarily amazing. But what I'm going to do to... Do this is I'm going to use, I'll put the other one in place, oh. <laughs> and hopefully I'll tighten the other one. That will hopefully let me break this side loose. Nope. All right. Well, we'll deal with that in a second then. There's another way. I'll show you the other way. But for the moment, we'll just take this screw out, and uh, hopefully... I will be able to lift off this side. The big question always with the Spydeco, uh, the Golden Spydecos, is uh, the lanyard tube. They have a tendency to, as they install these lanyard tubes, install them a little too tight, such that you end up really having to work to get the, the scales off of there. This one feels like it's working its way loose, but all I'm doing here is just kind of rotating, rotating, rotating while keeping the blade in a uh, fixed position here. And my goal here is to get this guy eventually to, to the point where I can get the blade out of the situation, which I have. So at this point in time, the, the whole knife is a lot safer. But more importantly, once I... Oh, um, eaten... Uh, not bearing, swashes there. Uh, but once I get to this point, what I want to be able to do is this. Beautiful. That lets me get the stop pin out of place. And now what I can do is sort of work this back and forth a little bit. And, oh boy. That is freaking on there. With the goal of gently removing this freaking lanyard tube which is a load-bearing lanyard tube, apparently. Come off it. Come on. Why is this being such a pain in the neck? Neither side wants to come off. And unfortunately, 
Well, okay, let's ask the question here. What do I actually need to remove? I don't need to get the lanyard tube off of the, the, the metal, right? If the metal is what's stuck on there, I can live with that. So what I'm going to do instead is going to see if I can't remove... Ah, oh, but I have to get this standoff off too. All right. So there's a chance I'm going to have to go down to the bench vise for this. That's always a thing. But what I'm using is a Leatherman here. And my goal is just to kind of... Oh, no. There we go. Okay. Now we got the standoff off at least. Now I'm going to use my T6 driver. Get in here and I'm going to remove the pocket clip. Because the pocket clip won't be needed here. And once I do that, and especially once I pop this screw out, now the only thing holding this knife together at all is, a, uh, is the lanyard tube. So if I can get the G10 only off of that, if I am able to remove just the, the G10, that's fine. Am I making any progress here? Yeah, I am. At least on one of the sides, I'm quite nearly clear of the G10. Oh boy. This is the ugliest part of disassembling and maintaining any Spyderco Para 2 or Para 3 for that matter. Uh, the lightweight doesn't have this issue though. It's just this battle here. Um, okay. We are very nearly there. And my goal here is not to put so much force on the liners that I start warping things. It's pretty counterproductive. But you can see here that there's just a lot of the G10 that's kind of being worn away as I try to remove this. Ah, oh, Spyderco, why you gotta do this? There's also a chance that during the installation, see I'm very close on this side now. There's also a chance that during the installation I'll actually need to press the knife back together using my bench vise with a, uh, a towel and some plastic jaws uh, to get everything around the lanyard tube if it is in fact so freaking wedged on there. My other concern is the other side has not budged in the least <laughs> in all of this. So getting the G10 off of there is going to be its own little little festival of frustration. All right. So this video is going to be like 10 seconds of disassembling the knife and 20 minutes of trying to get the damn liner off. <laughs> Let me try a slightly different tack here using my iFixit little spudger tool there. There we go. Did a little bit of work for us. I feel like I'm almost loose on this liner. Because again, if the liner stays on, I don't care. That's fine. Here. Put these back together. Get in there. There we go. If you're curious, by the way, about any of the tools I'm using, uh, check out nickshabazz.com slash tools and you'll see a full listing of everything. But... There we go. We're making some progress only on this one side. Ay, ay, ay. I'm very concerned about the other side here. Oh, no, hold on. Got a little bit of coming loose. I know that seems counterproductive, but sometimes, especially if I want to make progress on both sides, it can be valuable to snap things back together. Part of my problem, too... Okay, see, I'm making some progress on the other side. Uh, part of my problem, too, is that... Uh, like, it feels like they've pressed the G10 in so tightly that in order to get this lanyard tube out, it needs to remove some of the G10. Okay, there we go. Hallelujah. We have... Yeah, this is actually flared. If we take a look at this... They have pressed this in such that the edges of this flare up, which is, this metal isn't coming off. Okay, well, thank you, Spyderco, for that. Um, how the heck do we get the other side off? All right, so what I'm going to try and do now is to maybe, like I said, I don't know that I'm going to be able to get the metal off. 
I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get this scale on over it. Yeah, I see a bench vice in my future here. Oh, Spyderco, why you gotta do it like this? The nice part about it, though, is that it does leave me the option to use the other side here as a bit of a lever to pop this lanyard hole off. This is, for what it's worth, a relatively new construction pair of three. It says 45 VN. God, I thought this was going to be a quick video, but alas, Spyderco had other plans for us. All right, can I pull this off? No, I really can't. They have flared this lanyard tube completely. Guys, what are you doing? Well, I know exactly what they're doing. They're using a pointed tool there to secure the backside, which... Spyderco has been a company which historically has had a very sort of frustrating relationship with disassembly and maintenance. For a while, they wouldn't warranty a disassembled knife. It voided the warranty. They changed that policy back when, which was good. Um, they're still a little weird about internal parts and shipping them out, which I can kind of understand. I don't want to get under here and start, because that runs the risk of deforming the liner, and although the titanium should hold everything in place afterwards, I just really don't want to go there if I can avoid it. But I'm also starting to wonder whether I can avoid it or not. Um, I could, of course, get in there with some kind of heat and try and remove the G10 that way. But it is very clear to me that Spyderco is not a company for whom disassembly is first on their mind, or second, or third, perhaps fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, or even eighth. Um, they are a company who makes knives and sort of seems to, at least from the seams of it. Can I get something in there? Maybe. I need a... This is probably too big. Can I get in there? They, they are a company who wants to sell you a knife, and they want you to just use it as a knife in a daily sort of situation. Okay, I feel like I'm making some progress that way. Because that's going to specifically wedge the liner up away from the lanyard tube. Just a little bit, which is... Or I'm sorry, the... Uh, yeah. And that should only be affecting the G10, which is the thing we need to have come off. Yeah, so... Uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of space to grab onto there. But, you know... So be it. But yeah, so this is just really frustrating. Um, they could have just had this be a nice friction fit. But instead, they went this route. I gotta say, not in love with that. We are making progress, though, right? We see that we've got that... Um, it's at least partly out the side there. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just... Try and push things back together so that it kind of takes off a little bit more of the G10... So I can kind of get a bit of a chewing action going here. I really hate this part. What a shame. But anyways, we are uh, we're making some progress here. It may not feel like it, but we really are. This is one of those things that, again, could be done better. Could be made easier, but just wasn't. And so, you know, this is part of the reason why any kind of aftermarket modification, and one could argue that even swapping scales onto a knife where the scales weren't meant to be swapped is, uh, is exactly that, is such a thing, right? I, I'm not saying it's, certainly I'm not saying it's bad, I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm not even saying it's a bad idea, but you need to just be a little bit aware of what you're doing. So I'm just rotating the lanyard tube a little bit there, um, with the goal here to being to kind of distribute the prying a little bit so I'm not misshaping it on one side or the other. Oh, we're very close now. Oh, uh, come on. Get off of there. 
What if I were to go, yeah, okay. It can come out of its pocket, that's fine. The only place it's being held in is by the damn peened lanyard tube. Which, come on, Spideco. This is part of the reason why I think right to repair, if, I, if you'll pardon me, I'm going to get on my soapbox for a moment. Something I've been thinking about a lot more of, of late is right to repair generally as a concept, but also in the everyday carry space. I feel like, uh, you know, right to repair is a legal question, but there's also ability to repair, which is a, an engineering question, right? This is a, a knife that has been designed very well in some respects, but very poorly in respect of disassembly. It has not clearly not been designed, or at least is not assembled, uh, such that, and one could argue that, oh well, they're, they're, they're just they did a they did the dis or they did the assembly incorrectly. They shouldn't have peened the tube. I'm like, well, yeah, I agree. Fact is, QC didn't catch it or anything like that. So clearly, it's partly is intended. But this is part of the reason why I am such an advocate for pocket knives. Um, to be straightforwardly disassembled, right? It just makes it better. It just makes it easier to go, you know, the next step, right? To make sure I'll come off it. Yeah, let me get this out of the way. Uh, it just makes it easier when you need to get in here. And sometimes you do, right? This is a knife that can largely be maintained and worked on without the disassembly process. But in situations like this, which I don't think are entirely unreasonable, right? Um, they have made a decision here that is, well, going to make your life worse. And, uh, yeah, well, that sounded like a there we go, but it wasn't. Never mind. Close. Very, very close. Uh, what can I do here to encourage this? Well... Again, I don't need to get the liner loose. I've given up on that, the way they've constructed this. Can I rotate the liner out of here? Yeah, see, look, the liner is wanting to come up here. So that's good. That's the extent of force I want to exert on it. Okay. But either way, you can see we're slowly wearing away G10 around the outside there. Ah, I deeply, deeply dislike this process. But yeah, anyways, I, I think right to repair is an important concept here, right? People should design their, their tools to be able to be maintained adequately, and we should view it as an engineering fault when they don't. You know, for a lot of people, oh, it's outside normal scope of use. Like, screw you, it's outside the normal scope of use. Um... <laughs> It's exactly the normal scope of use. We've just gotten used to the idea as a society, as a culture, that you, you shouldn't be able to maintain the tools that you're using on a regular basis because it's been sold to us because people can make that a much more... I'm sounding like Lewis Rossman here. Just have to sound a little bit more smooth. Sorry. Um, it always... Yeah. Uh, it, by the way, if you're ever curious about the right to repair world, um, he's a good place to start. A person who sounds very calm being very angry. Uh, but anyways, you know, it's just we've been sold this bill of goods that, you know, oh, you don't need to be able to repair the tools you use. That's something we can do for you for a price. It's rent-seeking. We should acknowledge it as such, and I don't even know that Spydeco's doing that, right? Because their their argument is, oh, well, we've got a warranty, so why would you bother? I'm like, eh, screw you. <laughs> for a lot of people, warranty isn't applicable. You live outside the States. It's a pain in the neck. You know, and your warranty department needs to be absolutely on point if that's the case. And, eh, so, either way. Okay, I think I'm going to go on ahead and call this video. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll bring it back once I get this. And approximately 30 seconds after I got the video, it uh, gave loose. Although this guy came off as well, which is no major problem. Right. But we see here, yeah, this other side was peened open as well. That's a problem. Spydeco, do better. 
But now we've got the original scales off, and we can start swapping in the titanium ones. My big questions here are uh, twofold. First off, am I going to be able to do this without going down to the bench vise to slip these uh, to slip the lanyard hole back in? The answer to that, I believe, is going to be a no. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the knife mostly together, uh, and then uh, we will uh, kind of take it from there. And then on this side, let's see how the liner fits in. Yep, uh, that looks like it should work. And is it going to go on on this side? Uh, it's not quite there. Oh, that's right, because the liner has to go on too. Ah, damn it. All right. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, we'll just start reassembling from this side. Okay. Uh, what I need to do first off is to take out the bushing here. This is a knife that has a bushing on it. And I'll go ahead and clean things up because I imagine that once I get these scales on, I'm probably not going to want to take them back off just because of the screwed up lanyard hole, uh, which, thank you, Spydeco. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is clean up the bushing itself a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the non... So there's this bushing has two sides. One of them has a little D-shape side cut off of it. The other side is purely circular. I'm going to install the D-shape side first. When I do that, I'm going to install the washer. And the washer, I believe, can go... Yeah, that'll work. And then I'll drop this into place right here. And that should work. Perfect. All right. Now what I do is I grab some Loctite, just some blue thread locker here. Go ahead and I'll install it. And install the thread locker. Yep, that's how that works. That's the verb. Uh, let's go ahead and put the screw in. There we go, and I'm just going to tighten that down. Okay, so that gives us one point of contact. Next, go ahead and put in the stop pin. Stop pin is symmetrical in this model, so it shouldn't matter which side goes where. That's in. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is uh, take my T6 driver, or T8 driver, and yet another sign that a company hasn't really been thinking so hard about this assembly is the number of different screw sizes. Used. Some people are going to object and say, oh, it's just the detail. But the thing is, it is very, very nice when you see companies use the same screw size uh, across all of their fasteners, or at least the plurality, as opposed to this knife, which has three kinds of screw and three different sizes of those screws. I'm going to go ahead and grab this real quick with my Leatherman here. And rotate, rotate, rotate. The goal just being to get that into position there. Okay, so now what I'll go ahead and do while I'm thinking about it is oil this side right up here. Beautiful. A little bit of oil. Oh, that was more than a little bit of oil. Okay. Well, now that I've drowned the thing, that's fine. Let's go ahead and put that in there. Now, here's my bigger concern. One of the bigger concerns is... Shut the door. Make sure background noise doesn't seep in. Seep in. Yes, because noise is liquid. As an acoustician, yes, 100%. That's false, kids. Put that on your physics exams at your peril. Okay, next step is going to be to get this in place. Maybe I should have put the liner in position on the lanyard tube before. There went my stop pin. Uh, how much suffering have I signed myself up for here? A lot. Da, 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 da. The nice thing is I only have one problem, right? Well, okay, I have many problems. But this would be very smooth, were it not? Okay, the lanyard's on. All right. Uh, let me put the stop pin back in position. Let me put the blade back in position. But were it not for the lanyard tube, this would be very, very smooth. <laughs> this would be relatively smooth. Um, this is not wanting to be in place right now because this is canted up to the side. And the reason for that, of course, is just flat out the freaking lanyard tube. 
One approach would be to go downstairs to the vise right now and pinch the lanyard tube in place on one side. Another question is whether I can do this organically, um, whether I can use just a piece of metal here and a little bit of weight. No. To be clear, I might be able to, but I probably shouldn't. Be right back. And we're back. Just took this guy down to the vise and pinched this guy on. Should work. Now I have to do the rest of it. Now this fits, which is important. Okay. Put this here. Stop pin. Ah, stop pin wants to sandwich in between. That's fine. I will let it. As does the blade. Actually, while I'm doing an assembly here, let's go ahead and lubricate. Sorry, the uh, vice is all the way down, and I made haste. What's amazing is that at this point in time, my uh, poor and long-suffering wife just doesn't even blink when I come flying down the stairs in a Batman mask. There we go. See, I had to lift this lock bar up for everything to snap back into position. Now what I should be able to do is install the pivot. This won't be fully seated yet because of the freaking lanyard, which I will no doubt need to go down and bust out the vise again to fully install. But at the very least, this will keep things attached. Not putting a lot of tension on that. Again, the point is to get it in position rather than to get it in screwed in. And is this even going to go in? No. I'm not even going to bother with that. I'm going to... Oh, no. Yeah. Let me try just giving this a pinch. No, that did not work. All right. Be right back. Just need a little bit more advice right here. Uh. All righty. There we go. What I just did, took it down to the vise. Gave it a little bit of a pinch. And, uh... A little bit of a pinch. Gave it a fair bit of pinch in action. And uh, now everything is in place. So, let's tune the knife up a little bit. It's not going to be uh, well set up in the pivot. Loosen this side. Loosen this side. I'm out of shape. Yes, I know. This is why I don't go around with the I am the wolf who protects the sheep whole thing really out of shape wolf best I'm like one of them St. Bernards well I imagine they're in better shape than I am carrying altogether too much stuff a little barrel actually it'd be nice an everyday carry barrel alright nope too tight why do I have blade play still what I'm going to do is fully tighten down both sides here. No play. Oh, well that was weird. Yeah, I guess it's not weird if it's a bushing. Uh, what was weird is that I, I fully tightened it down and then the action got better. What that means is that there were, you know, the fact that they were imbalanced was the thing that was pushing things out of whack. Alright, now finally, <laughs> put on the damn clip. And then call this a day after a good long time. Thought this was going to be easy, but alas, Spydeco's lanyard installation team with their 15 ton hydraulic presses had a different plan for us. Oh boy. Now I get to edit this. This is going to be very weird in that it's an edited video from me. Oh, not sure I can take it. I can take it. I'm just a whiner. All right. Uh, oh, I forgot how freaking low the clip is on this guy because of the lanyard people. And why is this screw not wanting to grab? Oh, there we go. It just took a little bit of convincing. And now a little bit more thread locker. And here we go. 
we are locked in place. All right, that's an action. Centering is very slight, maybe slightly facing the the, uh, the clip side, but given the amount of torquing I had to do, no problem. But damn, that's attractive. All right, uh, so pain in the neck, absolute pain in the neck process, not because of the scales, but because of the Spydeco. And, uh, but keep an eye out for a uh, review of those guys eventually. And uh, hope this is interesting to you. I certainly got my workout for the day and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.